What? It's not putting off any heat. Not like we need it. We live in southern Florida. The closest thing to a fireplace we have. Okay, start that over. It smells like burning electronics. That's okay. That's normal. Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. I'm Jill. And today starts actually a uh, Christmas week. So we are putting this on. And we have a fireplace going. And we going. have a fireplace. So like I said in the beginning, this is the closest thing to a fireplace we have. We live in Southern Florida. We have no use for fireplaces. Fireplaces that are in the houses that we've seen are completely brand new. It's like they've only used it once in the 20 years they've had it. Uh, almost kind of a nonsense thing. It does get cold to some people who've lived here their whole life. To us, we've lived up north in the snow and stuff. 40 degrees isn't that cold. I personally like the fireplace. Yeah. Well, we'll get one next time. Maybe one that puts off a little bit better heat than this. It still doesn't put off any heat. But uh, what we're going to do today is install this. We've been focusing on the Big Ben's outside functions rather than inside. We do want to take this off-roading. We do want to take it camping, overlanding, whatever. And one of the things that we wanted to do is have an area for the back end. Now, uh, to put stuff, this right here is the tabletop that you get from Ford. So it is a it is a Bronco accessory from Ford. It is the tabletop that hooks on and it slides uh, folds down. This right here after I opened it looks like a complete IKEA setup. It's like <laughs> nothing is set up for it. So full it, assembly is yeah, required. Pretty much full assembly is required. There are a few things that are hooked up to it, but it's very limited. Uh, <laughs> it's not one piece puts four screws in and bolted in. There's a lot of stuff that goes along with it. That was actually what I thought at first when I when he opened it that it was going to be you know fairly just plug and play deal and yeah, then he told me that it was so. like a bazillion pieces and I'm like oh we got an Ikea piece. <laughs> when we get it out there uh, before we install it we will go through the entire thing of what you get what to expect when you actually get one if you choose to do it yourself if you get somebody else to do it it's their problem <sighs> they'll figure it out uh, they'll watch this video or a couple other videos I've seen that actually had it I, I did not know that that's what this stuff came in the other videos didn't show all the pieces that come with it, uh, separated and everything like that. Now, we will, however, uh, go through the whole thing step by step of what you need to do, what equipment you need, and how it's mounted. So it's going to be interesting. This will probably take a little bit of figuring out as we do it. So, But it's not. it doesn't seem to be too bad. It's just you are drilling straight into the the inner rear of the tailgate. If you're not comfortable doing that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, I have no problem drilling into a car I just bought. I know I can do it. I've done it with other vehicles. He with might not. with, I with might. <laughs> pretty good results for most of them. But just wait till we get to yours. Then it's not my car, I don't care. Kidding. Kidding. Anyways, we'll go out there, we'll separate everything, make sure you guys understand what it comes with and how uh, many pieces there are to the puzzle that they call the Bronco tailgate. <laughs> so, see you out there where it's cold. We don't have a fireplace out there. Okay. So now we are out here. I have everything laid out. So the tools you need is a screwdriver, Phillips, a ratchet with a number 25 star point, hex, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now they do have these in the tool bag you get when you get your Bronco. It should be in the glove compartment. We do not use them because we want to make sure that we leave it where it belongs. I mean, if I leave it out here and I take it inside and I don't need it when I, or I don't have it when I need it when I go off-roading or whatever, if I want to take off my doors or whatever, uh, I'm not going to have it. So 
I use the tools I have at my disposal in my garage versus the ones that are in my car. You will also need a drill with a seven six yeah seven sixteenths drill bit. I basically have a step drill bit. I just have it taped off to where I know where it needs to end rather than find out too late that those are too big or the holes too big for those. Uh, instructions obviously, these again, panel removal tools. Uh, every time I use these, I absolutely love them. I use them on every panel I take off. And this is all the hardware. Now, as we go through, we'll show you what you have. You have these right here, just basically bumpers, same with the two up there. They go in holes basically on the bottom of the door. There's one right here and there's four holes behind this panel. Uh, all the other hardware we'll go through as we show you. The instructions are pretty good at telling you what you need to do. Follow them very closely. Uh, they are pretty good. I do have a hole punch and I'll show you why I'm using that. I also have tape somewhere. Forgot the tape. It's inside. So we'll show you what the tape's for. First things, we'll go ahead and put you on the tripod and we'll pull off the panel. First things first, we need to take off the panel right here. Now we have the panel removal tools to be able to remove it without destroying this or the uh, mar up the finish of this, uh, the paint itself. So just slip it in there, pop it out. Make some god awful noises. That's normal. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see it. You have little tabs right there that literally just slide up into these four slots. And then these press in, just press in right there and hold it in place. It's just gonna sit like that. When you pull it out, make sure you pull it out and then slide it out this way. Don't try to yank out the top because you'll break all these tabs off. Now, first thing it tells you is to put these all in. These are basically just gonna slide into, I'll let you be the, they slide into this, I believe, the top portion. Yeah, it looks like it's the top. Okay. This is probably easier said than done because you are trying not to- uh, Drop it. Here, you want to do the other one? Well, I got the other four I got to put on. The other two, you mean? Sorry, the other two. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I had public education, so. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> kidding. I did too. Wow. I did too. Wow, Miss Freaking High and Mighty. These, public education win number one, go on the bottom. <laughs> Oh, I can't see it, it's too goddamn close. Uh, so what we are going to do is we're gonna put on the top portion right here. So that goes like this, right? And this, sorry about your foot, goes this way. So before I go any further, Remind, uh, remember to put, take that please. This piece in first, it slides in this way and then rotates in and sits there. So put them in all four slots, drop it down and then push it in a little bit, right about there. Once you finally get it all done, it will be good. Okay, and then that looks like it goes in the bottom first. Now, yeah, bottom first and then kind yeah, of. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to make sure I put the tape where I need it. So that goes there. All right. Let me, you got that right there? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
and get some tape on it so I can actually mark where the holes go. So you're gonna have to put a couple screws in, maybe. There we go. To hold it in the place. Two, one on one side, one on the other. Uh, right, right there. there. That way it lines up everything. And you can get these uh, once you get that in there. You can get the tape behind it. Okay, so as best you can, mark the center of the hole. Now, to take everything back apart, because now you actually have to drill the holes for it. Now I do have a centering punch, which works wonders from keeping your drill bit from walking all over the place. Point of no return. Now, again, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, do not do it. Put that out of the way. These right here are kind of interesting. So they go, they go in there, they snap in there. And let me show you first how it goes. So this right here goes on there. See how it has the little nubs on it? little bumps that goes that way against it so once you finally tighten it down to the point that you uh you need to it will actually keep this piece from moving while you tighten this which collapses this whole thing on this right here so we'll go ahead and throw this one in there show you how it goes this is where your socket comes in. Again, you do have this in your tool bag. I just prefer not to use the ones out of my tool bag because me, I usually forget. I don't put them back and then all of a sudden I'm out on the trails trying to find something. I can't find it. So there you go. It's collapsed. doesn't come out. Go on to the next one. Now this one right here, there is two layers of metal. So when you do this one, don't be surprised if you end up with two layers of metal you have to drill through while all the other ones are one. So this one is a little bit thicker because it does have part of the brace right here for the inside, just the edge. And Everything will be good. Okay, now for the final step of putting everything back in. Obviously, this piece goes in first. And nicely. Now, this piece. This piece right here, I do have to put everything together. What I have to do is put the center piece in while putting these pieces in right here. There's a lot of things that go in between and I'll show you exactly what I need to do after I get it all set up. This right here tells you exactly how they go together. This corner right here is probably the most sophisticated or most hey. problematic because you literally have a screw, a washer, this bracket, another washer. another washer, this piece of the bracket, another washer, and then it goes into there. So you're gonna have to put all this stuff together while this stuff is still loose and able to uh, bolt in. So what we're gonna do is put this up, bolt in the top pieces first, and then worry about this section in just a second. We also have to have that together too, which is another issue we have to deal with so we'll uh put it all together and kind of show you once we get it in there 
or the bolt, the lock washer, a the thin, so there are two different sizes. There's a thick one that has two, and there's a thin one that has one. This is the one you need, because the thick one actually goes between this and the panel that she's holding, which I'll show you in just a second. Before we go any further, make sure that we are aligned properly. Come over here, uh, just stand over this way. That way I can align this a little bit. Now the thing I always try to do is not tighten all the screws or tighten one screw and then try to put the rest in because you might have to move the thing around. It's better to leave them loose. That way they have some slack. some slack when you put the other screws in. I will have to put screws in these, these corners. This is a screw and a bolt or a nut. biggest thing now that you got it lined up push it in again don't tighten up anything until you have everything together because you are still going to have to get things behind this one and all the others so the top gets two of the rubber washers you have six total one for each of the ones in the bottom and two for the top ones it does stick out a little bit farther this is going to be a joy to get two washers in there. Jill's going to try her hand at putting in the uh, washers. No pressure. Crap. Jump. I got it. Found it. Watch out for the metal shard just in the grass. I got my foot on it. There. Right there. Dang it. I suck at this, by the way. Did you find the other one? What? The washer? It's right here. Oh. It fell down. Dropped right there. Oh, by the way. Hmm. You have another washer you gotta put on that. Get the concentration. What are you looking for? This? Here. Do not take the speed handle off or the extension off. Concentration, look at the concentration on her face. You can know when she's concentrating when her tongue's sticking out to one side. <laughs> Good job. Hang on. Why am I just spinning? Hang on. So first off, during the installation of all four of these bolts, this one wasn't all the way tight this right here was still loose and it kept spinning. What we ended up having to do is put uh, tape all around here, even though there's a little cut right there. We'll touch that up if it's visible. We'll uh, grab the hold of a pair of pliers and put it in there because it would not go all the way down. We ended up having to fix it. So, time to put this all back together. Take two. We'll wait till after she uh, touches it up real quick. Oh, yeah, I can do that right there too. And we'll be right back. I'm gonna change the battery. That's actually amazing. So this is actually a standard nut. Yeah, I just have a nine millimeter on there. Uh, tighten it down as best you can. It does have the nylon threads, which makes it nice because it does have the locking feature already. Go with this side.
Do that again. I'm concentrating. Stop it. I know, but do it again. I didn't have it in there. It was like right here. It was okay. Like... So, go ahead and back up. This right here, as it said, as she stated before, is 25 pounds. Weight limit. Don't put a lot of stuff on here. Yeah, it has a uh, the thing on Yeah, 25 pounds. Just small. I like the fact that everything has the rubber mounts to it. It's not going to uh, rattle around too much because not only does it have the rubber mounts back there, it has the rubber mounts right here too. So these right here will keep it from rattling around. It doesn't look too bad. It's good for when you get gear ready and stuff like that or doing camping, cookout, pots, dishes, whatever. Uh, it is a nice added thing. It's a nice place to have that you're not restricted when you look over this. When you do this way, you're going to always have this in your head unless, of course, you have the Mick hardtop, which a lot of people don't. Most people opted with this one to get it faster. So Unless you're short. Yeah, unless you're short. Unless you're under... Six foot? <laughs> five foot ten. Five foot ten. I, I go with five that. Five foot ten. So, I like it, actually. As far as quality, not too bad. Uh, decent for what it is it's pretty decent uh now granted 25 pounds isn't you're not going to sit on it because these aren't going to last no. but you can you can seem to feel that it's decent for the size it is and for what it needs to be i don't want to put any more weight on this because you do have a huge back tire yeah everything like that on it so this right here is perfect especially the fact that it opens wide enough to where you can have this and that as well where if it was like this, you would cut out part of it. I like yeah, the fact that it's all the way like out. Yeah, you would cut a third of it out. Ford did a good thing by letting it come all the way out this way because this opens up a whole new realm of possibilities for, for our shelves and stuff. Now, they do have shelves out there that are not these. They have two shelves on them. I don't like that because I want everything on one shelf i don't want the top shelf or the bottom shelf blocked by something up here so it kind of makes the piece the purpose of something here when you can't use the back half of it we plan on using this for when we go overlanding uh or off-roading for gear uh cooking yeah normal getting our stuff. getting our lunch ready so i like this uh quality probably put a four because i wish they had better better options for the nuts that go on the back they do have rib nuts and stuff like that but of course that takes a tool this is a pretty good standard setup just wish it was a little bit nicer uh easier to get them torqued down like we have a problem with this one <sighs> ease of installment not too bad i'd say probably a two. I would give it a three because I'm a novice. Yeah, I'd say probably a two. Uh, you do have to drill holes in here. Uh, <laughs> in that case, I'm going to bump it to a four because there's no way in hell I could drill holes in my own car. <laughs> uh, that was brand new. I'll, I'll drill holes in your brand new car. <laughs> uh, so I give it a two uh, just for the fact that it is hard to line all four of them up, uh, especially when this thing comes apart. It's not Put together you basically have to slide this in and bolt it all down i uh, wish this was a little bit longer to where it went fully under the uh bracket but again torque down enough it's not going to go anywhere do i plan on doing it with all the broncos probably something like it uh i know the badlands will have something either this or something like this yeah i do plan on doing i probably put this on the badlands and the uh, black diamond will maybe roll around with something else if something else comes out that's different without that second shelf so but it's not too bad mm -mm. we like it uh haven't used it obviously we just put it in but we'll be using it quite a bit maybe we'll put diesel up here 
No. He's still, no. He's 25, more than 25 pounds. Yeah, he's Anyways, not a chihuahua. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I hope you like the video. Again, we like this. A lot of people don't have problems with these. Now, we did, but that gives you an idea of what to look for when you put in yours. Also, I do see a lot of people putting these on and all of a sudden you uh, see the picture change from where they, you knew they made a mistake and they never said anything. So go through real quick. You put this piece in first, the Bronco piece. Then you put this piece in next, which is the frame bolt it all together once you get everything screwed in and drilled then put this piece in and then slide this over into the bracket or into the groove and then tighten everything down once you have it tightened down it's easy i mean it's pretty nice close it doesn't rattle around so not too bad and it's not gonna get in the way of anything else. It closes up short enough or small enough to where it's actually pretty decent. I like it. I might end up putting this on all the cars. It's pretty good. And technically even one person can do this because you did a majority of it, but it's always good to have somebody else there just, yeah. you know, looking for dropped washers and hand hardware and- When your hands are full- Lining up this. When your hands are full, a helper is worth a million. Yeah. 100% doing it by yourself and dropping at or forgetting the tools over on the other side of the car you have to take everything apart or if you do drop something not having to bend down to grab it while everything else is still hanging there is you know a yeah. lifesaver but yeah you can technically do it as a solo person but it's always good to have a helper yeah instructions are pretty good uh, they are very good actually i do like the instructions uh, follow They're better them, than Ikea. Follow them. They, they will guide you completely straight. They won't, uh, they won't mess around too much. Um, as far as that, you know, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll be doing more modifications to this. Uh, in fact, we're doing one here in a couple minutes as soon as the camera cools down. Um, it's just a uh, Bronco accessory? Yes, it is a Bronco accessory. We'll put the link down below. Yeah, we'll, okay. And, uh, We'll see you next video. Bye. Bye.